Nebraska Preps post game with Damon Benning and Jacob Padilla. Welcome in. You heard the big voice guy. That's Nebraska Preps post game. Little different twist. I got my main man. That's the same. I just call him JP. Jacob Padilla. Uh, this is a new little thing for us, right? We just kind of had a little epiphany, and uh, we've got a little downtime, but with um, summer basketball ramping up and skill development being quite the topic of conversation, uh, we're, we're going to delve into the areas of training and development and overall I, I guess skill development, right? Folks that invest in young people. Yeah, and that's kind of what we talked about uh, at the tail end of our last uh, episode, just the growth in the game and how there are so many different ways for kids to get better now. And guys like who we're going to talk to here uh, are a big part of that. Yeah, we, we went in tandem just because they work so well together. And we wanted to give you guys a snapshot of kind of what their big picture looks like in terms of skill development. We've got Cody Levinson, who is the owner and operator of Going Vertical, and I, I refer to him as kind of a director of development, really good at what he does. I almost feel like I should call him coach. Um, Adam Barnes uh, is joining us as well. Guys, good afternoon. How are you? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Co- Cody, good. I, let, let me start with you real quick. Um, give me a little bit of the vision. What is we, – we hear going vertical, and we used to think – just speed training right or these treadmills where you learn how to get fast and it is a lot more than that in 2021 talk a little bit about that idea and 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 what it is yeah so the growth of going vertical it's always been kind of a dream or a goal to have something like that i mean i grew up in grand island and the closest thing that we had was in lincoln called acceleration and i mean it was Mm. Three times a week, I would drive by myself. I mean, it definitely changed who I was as a person and a player. And then when we moved to Omaha, going vertical was over in Rockbrook. And what I remember about going vertical, besides the workout, it was the first sports training development program around. I mean, besides the schools, and it was ahead of its time. And he went out and sponsored the basketball league. That was the old item in league and there were going vertical jerseys everywhere. Everybody was coming in and training. And so the opportunity became available about six years ago to actually truly buy going vertical. And at that point it moved from Rockbrook out to Sat brothers drive where we are now. And it was, uh, when I got into it, there were two soccer fields and a big section of training. And so my vision from day one was to, develop it into a basketball academy, a training of some sort, and having the resources and the ability to help everybody from all skill levels. And it was kind of fun when we actually got into cleaning up, going vertical and finding everything. We found old (laughs) articles from 92 all the way through, let's say, 96, 95. And it's the who's who of athletic training, baseball, football, basketball, track, that trained out at going vertical. And the guy cut out all the articles about these. His name was Matt. And, I mean, we kind of go back through and look at them all the time. They're really interesting. That's funny. It's almost come full circle. That was the place to go. Matt trained me for almost three years out at going vertical. He got me back healthy and strong and It's the first place where I heard the term biomechanics. I had no idea what that meant. I just figured there's a certain way you run. What what in the world is a gate? What do you mean gate? Like, what's wrong with my gate? You know what I mean? So that's kind of interesting. Coach Coach Barnes, Mm -hmm. listen, uh, become very, very popular, even piqued my interest. And I try to stay below the radar, but I'm like, God, I can't. There's something this guy's out here doing that everybody is gravitating towards. How'd you get started and what's kind of the connection between you and Cody? It's hard to work with people you don't like, so there has to be something good <laughs> no, there. Exactly. Cody's a good guy. Uh, I don't know. This actually started a long time ago for me, but I just, you know, was under the radar, living in Houston for nine years, coming back, working with guys. Started, I mean, even with like Jason DeRusso, I mean, Jess Shepard when she was in, you know, 10th grade, Akoy when he was in 7th, 8th grade, Anton Young, uh, you know, Josh Jones, just Jarrell Creighton, guys that a lot of these kids don't even remember who they are now. And so, you know, making making the time to come back and work with guys like that, 
it just kind of started growing, got in with Scotty and Vernon Davis, J- Jason's cousins. Um, you know, Jacob even brought his brother out before, you know, for workouts. We were out at Davis, you know, a long, long time ago. Is that so, why Jordan can shoot? <laughs> uh. <laughs> No, he put in a lot of hours on his own. I know that Jacob took him to the gym a ton. So, um, no, it's just, it was something that just kind of grew behind the scenes. And then when we had the opportunity, I, I moved back here, you know, back in 2015 and then, you know, linked up with Cody a little bit over three years ago, moved the Academy in here. And it just kind of, just kind of took off. I'm big on programming. I want structure for the kids, not kind of a, Hey, let's get a workout in today. Let's try to get a workout in next week. Let's get them in a program and, and, and just watch this thing grow and, it's literally what, what's happened. And uh, we're lucky, we're blessed, and got a lot of good things going on out here now. Yeah, and now you guys just recently uh, announced that uh, you got a little bit of expansion going on there, kind of upgrading the facility. How cool yeah. is it for you guys to come together with this partnership and see it grow over the last few years to the point where, hey, we, we need to make this thing bigger because we've got so much interest? Yep. I know for me, when I first met with Cody, my vision, his vision, it just it linked up. And – we want to stay focused on the training aspect, the holistic side, the weight room, the court, taking that, applying it to game situations. Um, and then, yeah, with our programming, working all the way down kindergarten, all the way through our pros and stuff. I mean, it's, it's been a blessing, but we need more space. And uh, that's, that's the plan. So these courts will be in soon and we'll it's keep coming. rocking and rolling. <laughs> the courts are coming. So, Cody, uh, it, yep. it's crazy because you have to kind of take a leap of faith. I used to see so many cross train athletes you the lizies of the world and guys would come out and they'd use the turf in the facility and i'd see them every saturday or whenever you'd let them in because you're one of the more accessible guys which i'll get to in a little bit because i think that makes you automatically different not not a guy that's hard to find um you, you took kind of the nest t plunge you and i talked about it in passing a couple of weeks ago where you felt like it's a calculated risk, but one that you feel like is going to pay off in the long haul. You're going to give up a little of the short-term gain to cast the long-term vision. Yeah, I mean, when we got into going vertical, we had the two full soccer fields, and soccer seasonal. I mean, they are rented from November through the end of March, I mean, April 1st. And I'm not a soccer guy. My wife's not a soccer guy, and we just kind of had the fields in there when we got it. So I believe three, Adam, three and a half years ago, we had an oversized section that we weren't really truly ready to give up the full soccer rentals. And so we tore that out and we kind of put in a uh, sports court floor and put two hoops up and uh, said, Adam, here you go. That's all we got right now. Go to work and see what you can build. And three years later, I mean, we are busting at the seams. I mean, last night, our, and this is just an example of last night on uh, what, what was it last night, Tuesday night, we have our skills development. It's a high school session. And I have my sixth grade group in there doing some strength and conditioning. And we're not even on the courts. We're doing the, on the rubber. And Adam, I mean, I counted at one time, I think there was like 28 kids in there and they are all active moving, doing something with two hoops and having the opportunity to get rid of the turf and truly build two pro sized courts um it's something exciting i mean the turf is gone it took about a week to get out i mean it was 10 hours a day for five six guys tearing it out and now we're sitting here waiting for it and i mean it's exciting every day i walk in there we got new lights above the court i mean they light up instantly it's just a whole different setup in there it's exciting i mean i'm like a kid in a candy store How much of an impact, you talk about all the things that you guys are focusing on in addition to just the skills training, and we're seeing really a growth in that kind of area with the the athleticism training and all that extra stuff. How big of an impact do you think that has had on the rise and the level of the game with so many different options for these kids to get better outside of just their practices? I think it's huge. Um, It kind of takes me back when I was in Texas. One thing I would love to see up here, especially in the schools, Texas has an athletic period. Um, so if you're an athlete, band member, whatever, you don't have a PE class. You have an athletic period. So these kids are with their coaches year round. So if you play basketball, you get an hour and 20 minutes, you know, with your coach, with your players, with your coaches, you know, every single day. So that's an hour and 20 minutes that those kids are getting better in school, you know, and then you still in season, you got practice still afterwards. You get, basically an hour, hour and 20 minutes of skill work, 
then you go to practice afterwards and the growth of those kids. I mean, they're just getting so much better because they have all that time set aside for them. So my vision, you know, when we, when you came back here was to create an opportunity where these kids can get that same time frame, you know, get that extra skill work in. And uh, it's taken off as far as the weight training. That's been huge. I know our guys have made huge strides, a lot of the girls too. Um, but then just seeing it, how it all ties together. When you go from the weight room to the court, you talked about gate, you talked about, you know, running. There's stuff, you, you know, you can do in the weight room for it still. You know, you don't need a treadmill necessarily. But, you know, just seeing the game expand, there's a lot of great places, a lot of great coaches, you know, for these kids to go work on their game. We're just really locked in on what we're doing here and trying to help as many people as we can. So that's interesting because I think that's one of the things, <clears throat> full disclosure, Adam, that kind of drew me to you. Um, I trust Cody a ton. Um, he's highly competitive. And I saw you at a West Side game. And that's the first time in a long time that I would see somebody that I consider in the skill development game yeah. at an actual high school game, which let me know two things. Well, it gave me the, the idea for two things. Number one, um, there is no us and them. There, there, there's, yeah. there's me trying to support what the vision is. Number two yep. is you were visible in an arena that wasn't your own. So I, asked, so I, I saw Cody and I said, you got to tell me more about Adam. I said, I, I watch him on social media. I'm not sure what to think. I know a lot of people like him. Um, talk to me. Right. And mm -hmm. what is it about the perception of trainers and guys that are in the field that you're in where it's us and it's them, where you guys don't really seem to play that game. Like, I, I just heard you say there's a lot of great trainers out there. There's a lot of places for kids to get better. We just want to – a lot of people don't say that out loud. Say it out loud. I mean, there's good people everywhere. And there's people, you know, in any industry, good and bad. Um, you know, when I kind of first started this, yeah, I was locked in on working with the premier athletes that – you know, the pros and the college players. And I've been lucky to work with a lot of them. Um, but then you start to realize like, you know, and I, and I kind of learned this working with USA basketball when we were down uh, in Houston for the final four, working at camp with Don Showalter and the USA basketball crew, basically, um, you know, just talked about like, if you really want to grow the game, everybody wants to work with number one, two, and three on a team. Let's, let's focus on four through 10. Like how can we make four through 10 better? You know, and, and that's the big thing for us is, I love working. I mean, we got college kids, WNBA player on the court right now. I mean, pros, but knowing that we can work with these kids and just help grow the game. I mean, everybody's got to work together at the end of the day. And we're focused on what we're doing inside this building. Um, I don't want to spend time or waste time focusing on anything else. We will, we want to pour it all into our kids. The ones that come in here, the ones that don't, that's fine. You know, there's other places to go to, so we can't work with everybody. So there's no reason to fight with anybody. We all got to come together and just keep growing the game. And you mentioned kids four through 10. And um, I think uh, a great example of that is St. Thomas. He's a guy I kind of helped coach him a couple of summers ago. And yep. he was one of our best players, but none of us were thinking D1 at that point. And yep. the growth, both, I mean, physically, skill yeah, we, level. We just talked about him uh, on the show this yeah, uh, yeah, Emotionally, I think he's really matured in that area as well. Just yep. how cool is it for you guys to see guys like this that come into you uh, that come to you that aren't necessarily the, the, the top tier guys that have been kind of preordained yeah. as, Hey, these are going to be the guys and to see them kind of elevate themselves into that tier and really be able to accomplish the dreams that they were hoping to. to that's, what, that's what it's all about. I mean, my phone stays ringing. Like it's Saint 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 did this on his own. He committed to put in the work. He came in about two years ago and just said, it's prob I'm ready. It's probably like, Saint. <laughs> uh, he should be walking in. Any time, but, uh, uh, you know, he came to me two years ago and was just like, I'm ready. Like, let's do this. And then he made the commitment. I mean, like I said, I'm big on programming. I'm big on consistency. And, you know, I'm a skill guy, but at the end of the day, I'm a habit builder. And we have to build positive habits for these kids, whether it's, you know, making their bed every morning when they wake up or, you know, doing the little things right. And that translates into life skills. But with saying the maturity on the court, off the court, he just learned how to work. And that's one of our phases that we talk about in our program. You just got to train to train. You got to learn how to train. And then we train to win. And uh, he made that commitment. It's been awesome seeing guys like that. Him, Jade, and all these guys that are in here all the time. So, Cody, it's a fine line for you, right? It, uh, I, I see you 
all the time. I know what the kids think of you. I know pretty easy going, but at the end of the day, uh, you're ultra competitive. And so when you're watching this, this, this kind of evolve, how do you, it's almost like you have to unknow what you know, right? I mean, even if I just look at you and your brother, you're, you're, you're polar opposites. You're both, (laughs) you're both competitive. Um, how do you not take all of that other stuff, let it dictate what you do here? How do you continue to be kind of this, this lifelong business learner of kids without any of the preconceived stuff, right? Like how, you've, you've obviously been able to draw the line between this is what I went through, past experiences, this is what, this is what like you just, you continue yeah. to just kind of mix it. You have to have a mix, and that's the exciting thing about the game of basketball. I mean, I love the game of basketball. It's done everything in my life, and it teaches you so much more than just how to compete, and it teaches you life skills. And so when I see saw Adam's programming and, and watch him build out what was the true vision of encumbering everybody, I mean, the, the true – the programming builds on each other. If you just show up in the gym and say, Hey, I'm going to work hard this week. I'm going to take next week off. You're not going to have those gains. And so to watch Adam's drills progress and the kids develop and you guys say, Saint, I sat back. I mean, I played with Saint's dad way back in the day and he was just as good, had the future just like Saint did, but he didn't work. And so stepping back and not even talking to Saint, just watching him and Adam go to work and, and, Nothing flashy. I mean, it's the same warm-up. It's the same thing. But to watch him all of a sudden take it and progress, that's a life skill. That's exactly what Adam just got done saying. They're learning how to work. And it's not, it's going to carry over to so much more. And that programming that Saints getting is the same kid that number four, five, six, and seven are getting. Yes, it's a base, and then you expand on that, but the overall programming is the exact same for everybody. And that's my vision. I mean, we're never going to have teams. You're only as good as the coach that's coaching that team. There's certain things that you can't control, but as a player development, you can make sure that kid is developing along the way and getting the opportunity to keep growing. So that's where I'm excited. I love separating the two lines and where we're at, and we're always going to be different. Um, Obviously, the last year has been different for everybody. Um, (laughs) How are you guys able to navigate through the pandemic and – Offering opportunities for kids to get in a gym when there are a lot of places shut down while also staying safe and uh, following all the protocols and everything that mm-hmm. you need to do. Yeah, what, well, you're not kidding. <laughs> Without you guys, there was no us. Holy smokes. Yeah, we. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of my staff, all the guys up here that put in the extra hours. I mean, we basically dropped – we were here from 7 till 10 o'clock almost every single day. One individual, two – two groups or, you know, whatever we're doing to stay spread out. I mean, it was crazy. Um, just the amount of work that these guys put in, you know, the staff and the players to show up on time, make sure they're following protocols. We're cleaning all the time. I've never cleaned so much in my life. Um, life skill, but, uh, yeah, it was just, it was just crazy. We, uh, I mean, I'm, it was a blessing to be able to stay open and do what we did made for some really long days, but I wanted to do that. Cody wanted to do that for the kids and try to, I mean, they needed an outlet. I mean, to have everything ripped away like that so fast. And, you know, it, it was, it meant a lot to us that, that we were able to do that for them. What have you guys kind of seen? Like, we, there, a lot of people talk about it. It's, it's become very cliche or popular to say the bas- the game of basketball, the evolution is, is definitely on the upswing, right? And, mm-hmm. and maybe it's your four through 10 philosophy, which I may steal yep. uh, on for tomorrow morning's show. <laughs> um, <laughs> What is it that you guys have seen? We know accessibility, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> what makes it different, and what's the evolution you guys individually have seen in the game of basketball? Uh, basketball is very cyclical. I mean, you know, you're going to go through different spurts right now. You know, the analytics is still huge. You know, space and floor out, creating driving lanes, corner threes, you know, free throws, layups, that type of thing. But at the same time, you know, going back to concepts, what's good for Saint, you know, preparing him for the next level isn't what's good for Nick or David Harmon or one of those guys that's going to come off the bench and help out, you know, or then we throw in, you know, I want to give a shout out to the Elkhorn South guys. There's a big group of those guys have been coming in two or three times a week for the last year and seeing their growth and evolution, but what's good for them might not be 
good for another team, you know? So we try to stay conceptually That's pretty funny. consistent as far as what we're doing, um, you know, training wise, but the game has just evolved so much. It's so much more athletic. And if you can implement that skill level and increase skill level, um, these kids can make that jump so fast. Like when I first moved to Houston, moved to Houston, like I had all the athletes in the world to work with in the gym down there. Um, you take them through some basic skill work stuff that coaches are teaching up here. These kids have no clue. You know, there's just athletic high flyers, you know, and then once we kind of merged those programs together, that's when our program in Houston really took off too, was, you know, having the ability to get kids to understand you can't rely on your athletics. That's a crutch. You know, you, you, you rely on that. You don't develop your skills and vice versa. You might be super skilled, but if you aren't athletic and working on it all the time, like you're going to get left behind. So just, just that consistent, that is, the game's always going to be growing. It's going to be become more athletic, high scoring, you know, at the, at the upper levels. Um, but doing what's right for the kids, you know, at the lower levels and stuff like that at high school and stuff like that too. Just making them great high school players. There's nothing wrong with being a great high school player. Cody, it's funny, right? Because what he's saying is something you have to embrace. You look at a guy like who, that we talk about all the time, Connor Milliken, who uh, you've spent an inordinate amount of time with watching his game develop, helping develop his game. His game mechanically doesn't look like a lot of other players, but it works for him. What? How fine a line is it between – and Adam's kind of hitting on it – resolving what you do – versus the customization of what that player brings to the table. Yeah. I mean, you really look at what's going to make him successful now and what the end picture is going to be for a kid like that. And, and Connor, I mean, our relationship's different. You know that yeah. he's been my neighbor. He <laughs> that's that's family, my right? Brother. That's family. I mean, yeah. I mean, he happened to live right next to me. From a young age, he was different than everybody else. I mean, just when I say different, competitive on his toes, had nothing to do with basketball. It was a personality trait. Yep. And uh, so a kid like that, I mean, it was a blast to be around and get to know. And his older brother and mom and dad are great people. And uh, so at a young age, we took him and handed him to Alvin and said, hey, learn how to compete, learn how to play the basketball game. That was intentional, when- too, by the way, right? You're not being, you're not just saying that. Like, you you, you kind of piece this thing together with what he would need for, for the sure. full picture. For the, for the end result of where I think Connor can get as a person and a player, he had to get out of his comfort zone. And so... I mean, we literally walked in to North Omaha first tryout, and he I re- didn't know anybody. And he was the type of kid, though, that when you're talking special kids, he jumped in line and didn't know any different. Yeah. He was ready to go. He was ready to go. And then watching him grow as a person and, and go from fifth grade, sixth grade, to now finally being strong enough and wanting to work on his game, willing to learn how to play basketball, and he's in the same category as Saint. They show up and go to work. I mean, hours and hours and hours of watching film, just talking the game of basketball over. I've never met two guys that work more than those two. Adam, let me ask you a question. Just This is yep. kind of selfish, but I think it can also <laughs> highlight just kind of what you guys bring to the table. For instance, all right, I, I want – I'm, I'm, I'm going to make, I'm going to take this nest T plunge and I want coach Barnes. I'm like, Hey, I see you working with CJ Mitchell. I want to bring my son. I, I want Caleb to mm-hmm. come work with Adam Barnes, but you know what I want to say? Coach Barnes, I'm so sick of these spot up threes, right? I don't want him in the corner shooting threes. I want him to yep. grow his game, whatever it is that I may say. Yep. What, how do you handle if it's different or not the same? I could be Tim Smith parent. What if it's yep. different? And not the same as kind of your ideology on what yep. you see or where you see their development. Uh, the first thing I ask every parent, <laughs> guardian, whoever, do you trust me? Um, you know, we have a product that we've developed over the years. And if you trust me, we'll make it happen. Um, once we start, start talking about training styles, I'm, it's, it comes off of facts. I mean, you got to look at statistics. You got to break down film with people and you got to walk through things. I mean, there's, spot of threes might be good in a certain style. I mean, at West side, he's going to probably be stuck in the corner at times shooting spot of threes. I mean, a lot of the time, better not be for much longer, but I'm (laughs) exactly that's neither here nor there. (laughs) But anyways, but you know, as we're, sorry, coach, as we're working working through that, you know, I mean, pacing, I've had the same 
with Payson. I've had the same conversation with Tate, you know, with CJ. Like, um, every coach is going to have their style, but we're going to look at the holistic side of training first and foremost. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Way too many times, you know, everybody has to use the term, where, you know, putting this in my bag or what, you know, if your bag's got a hole in it, I don't care how many things you can do. You have to be great at something, you know, you have to be great at something. I may steal that coaches too. Don't, yeah. Coaches, coaches don't want average players at a lot of things. You know, they want, you know, with saying it was our emphasis was going to be on improving his three point percentage. Um, with Jaden, you know, who just walked in, it was, you know, slowing the game down for him. He plays so dang fast that he's got to be able to control his speed, control his tempo more. So we're going to look at the holistic side of it. I'm going to take what you think. I'm going to take what I think, and we'll blend them together, and we'll, we'll do this the right way. Cody, how fine a line is it between uh, compromising and best practice? Because you guys don't get to where you're at without having a little alpha in you and data to drive home the point. We're, how fine a line is it between best practice and, hey, we're here to help? Um, it's a fine – it's not that fine a line. Players know. <laughs> Players know. They, they, if you are uncomfortable in your skin and you're trying to do a drill and you're lying to yourself, you can only lie so long. Yep. And so I don't – to me, it's not – that line is not narrow. I mean, yes – you just got to be honest. And if you can put them in situations and drills and programming that they are uncomfortable in what they're doing to make them better, it's right there. I mean, you don't need to do any more than that. What's big picture? What's the, what's, what's the vision and kind of this symbiotic kind of flow? I mean, there are going to be a lot of people that are listening to this and they're going to say, Hey, yep. You know what? Those two, they're yin and yang, this, this, and that. And, you're going to have to make some tough decisions. What's what's best? What's big picture for kind of this relationship for going vertical and 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 I'm for lack of a better term, I'm just going to say the Barnes Academy. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Uh, I mean, big picture is let Adam grow it and build it. I mean, I'm here to support and kind of help instill kind of what our envision is and do different things that he's not. He's there 60, 80 hours a week. You you realize your infectious behavior with kids will lead him to taking a lot of migraine medication, right? <laughs> For sure. That works? <laughs> he, 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 <laughs> we, we had this conversation yesterday. I mean, and, and, and it's a concern of mine because Adam's a grinder. And he literally is in the building 60, 80 hours a week. And as an owner, and that's my product, and that's the guy running the show, I'm concerned about that. And so we're working and talking on how Adam can continue to grow the academy and train other people to get his message and, and what that means for rest for him and how to get off his feet and how he can, he can't help everybody. He has to pick and choose how he's able to touch the masses. And that's kind of where I'm at to help able to help him grow himself and his business you know what's interesting and, and i don't know how much well too late this is we're live and this is full disclosure you said something to me about three weeks ago you say a lot that i don't forget but you said hey listen you said db we can't have enough good trainers it's hard it takes a lot out of you um it, 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 it's a tough racket everybody pulls you in different directions how do you find the right fits to keep doing what you're doing without burning the candle at both ends? I.e. wearing Coach Barnes out. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's a dialogue that we have all the time. And, and Adam has a group, Scotty and Vernon, and, and what you look for is the genuine person that truly cares. They're not – they're going to give the same attention to – the fourth grade girls group as they do to the starting point guard. And, and it's not necessarily attention. It's energy. It's growth. I mean, you're going to talk different things, but you're doing it because you love the game of basketball and you can see what it does for everybody in the whole big picture. Mm. And separate from the, the training and all that, but uh, last couple of years, you guys got more involved and started sponsoring the, the Metro Pro-Am league every summer, Jason Isaacson's deal. And, 
I've been a huge fan of that league for years. It's so cool it's seeing. Cause Corey, that's because yeah. Cody can't shake. <laughs> he still thinks he's got game. That's what it is. That's, <laughs> that is Cody living oh, vicariously <laughs> through hoopers. <laughs> but like that, that's such a cool league because it offers a place for guys that have been playing here for years, guys that played college here, guys that grew up here, went away to come back and be able to play in front of friends and family and young basketball fans and just put a showcase on what you're doing now and, uh, like, all these kids down the line, they're going to be the ones coming back and playing in this league. What's that mean? How, how'd that come about that you guys kind of invested in that and wanted to be a part of making that even bigger? Jason started it, I don't know, yeah. way back when. And we played in it for yeah. years. And uh, when Jason created it, it was a platform that he could have a safe playing environment for Turk and Wes. So John and Wes came to him and said, hey, we're here in the summer. I can't be going to these open gyms and just playing with random people. We need to make it more competitive. So Jason really took it and grew it to what it is now. I mean, the last few years, Adam's really got behind it and done more organization and social media and getting sure that we have the right players and sponsorships to grow it. But it's just a safe playing environment for the athletes. I mean, when you got pros back here, they don't want to be playing against – me. Some random, <laughs> Me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so that's kind of – Jason needed some help with it and was willing to kind of partner up with us. And, and uh, again, it's just one of the, the only really league or teams that we are even a part of um, is just that league. All right, it's but- just a safe playing environment. Uh, we're up against it, but let me ask you one more question because you just said it, and, and, and both of you two handle it differently. Cody's extremely dismissive. Uh, Coach Barnes is kind of the face. How do you handle social media as a tool and a detriment? How, like, that's pretty important, right? Like, at least for, again, I, not to pull me into it, but if that was me, I, I tend, regardless of what my job is, my kiddos, whether it's Maya, Caleb, whatever, more low profile, go to work. But you need social media to market. You don't need social media as a crutch. You guys appear, at least on the surface, and I, I could be way off, to be total opposites. Coach Barnes, really, really good. Cody, really, really indifferent. <laughs> how, did, how, how does that work? Social media side of it for me, I'm, I'm in that group that if it wasn't, you have to keep up with the Joneses type of thing. I probably wouldn't even really mess with it either. I mean, really? I you need it for marketing. You need to, but the, the way that we've up until the pandemic kid, I didn't even want a, a camera guy in the gym. And then we partnered up with Brad Higgins and you know, Another the open one. runs that we had this summer and stuff like that. But him being able to create videos, you know, saints not out there playing. Jaden's not out there playing guys aren't out playing. We were able to send open run clips and stuff like that just to pique college coaches interest, little stuff like that, that we could do and utilize it as tools. And now with players transitioning, we've met with all of our high school kids um, transitioning into college where they're going to be able to profit off their name and likeness, creating a brand in high school to where they can kind of start to grow that. So when they get to college, they have some, they have that revenue that's there. They're growing their followers. They're doing it right. We've talked to all of our players about social media a lot. Um, So, you know, how can we do it and use it as a tool to help our players is kind of where I'm at. Um, It's, you know, you got to keep up with the Joneses. You got to do that stuff. But, at the end of the day, like we want to put our players first and spotlight the work they're putting in. Come on, Cody. Don't, don't shy away. <laughs> yeah. I, I just am not a social media guy. I mean, for my, uh, my real career. Hey, m- must be nice long. when you know enough people where word of mouth builds your business. <laughs> you better understand social media. No, and I do. I mean, for, I, I run a mortgage company. I mean, and so we have a whole, I have a, dedicated employee that runs my whole social media for my mortgage company, my whole platform, all my posts, everything. And when it comes to basketball, and this is where I do it because I love it. I I created a business for Adam to grow and build. I'm not the trainer. I I truly go and do it because I love the kids I'm working with. And, And I don't work with the masses like Adam's do. Adam does. I truly take one or two kids and I am on them from the time they get up, what they eat. Have you watched film today? 
ask Connor my questions to him. And, and yeah, so he I'm looks, gonna, by the way, he looks fantastic. He talks like you. He's starting to look like you in terms of his build. <laughs> Cut it out. You just gave my son 20 and a game to 12 in June. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> I mean, and look, he's so right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the social media side of it. I mean, I, I'm not out there pumping Cody Levinson. I mean, it's the kids that do the work. You, you didn't give Caleb yeah. Benning and CJ Mitchell 15 in a yeah. game to 12? Not that bit. I don't know. Maybe once in a while. <laughs> He doesn't even have his name on his Twitter. Kind of took me a while to figure out that was actually Cody. I know, right? <laughs> you guys are fantastic, man. We yep. we appreciate it. I listen. It, what you guys are doing, and I'm being honest. Anybody that knows me knows I'm not a smoke blower. Like I, I we wouldn't we wouldn't do this if we didn't believe in what you guys are doing. Uh, a lot of tough critics out here. Mister Buttoned Up, the guy keeps stats with a scorebook. <laughs> I'm a nerd. <laughs> oh, that's super <laughs> anal in particular. Listen, man, you guys are fantastic. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate guys. you guys. All Thanks right. So much. That, that's Adam Barnes. That's Cody Levinson. Two of the best in the business. That's Nebraska Preps post game. Isn't that something? Yeah, that was fun. They're so good at what they do. But you know what it really is? They can talk the X's and O's and the business. They're good. They're good with people. That's that's a huge part of it. That's why you've got. That's why kids come to them because their parents, the kids, trust what they're doing. Adam Barnes has DB team. Adam Barnes. He's probably only said twenty words to me in his life. That that's how good that guy is. And I'm tough. Yeah. Right. Best in the business. Those two guys right there. We'll be back next week. That's JP. I call him Jacob Padilla. You guys can call him JB. JP. Whatever. I'm ODB. Back after this. We'll be back next week. Nebraska preps. Post game. A Huda Media Production.